Um, I would say, though, you've got to be holding on to those commodities. So in your physical possession, your gold and your silver, because it's easy to manipulate the spot markets. And even yeah, if, well, and I, I do also, I'm sorry, go ahead. It's so sick how the system is set up. Oh, it how is. The paper derivative market is dictating the hard asset price. I mean, that's how they manipulate it, as you know. It's so twisted. But again, you're right. Hold it in your hand. That's super important. I mean, you know, some people like to, I mean, a lot of things and I like to be in uh, things that's, that are going to pay me like dividend paying exchange traded funds, whatever it might be like to gain exposure to things as well. But absolutely holding it in your hand. Number one, I, I'll never back off of that. I've been telling people that for a thousand years. I've been telling people to stay long this market too. And it's gone yeah. crazy. I've been net long for a while now. Um, but there's going to be a moment of reckoning. And, and you know, I don't know if you're even aware of this. I have a little little thing called the MMRI, Manometer yes. Market Risk Indicator. Um, it, it it seems to be spot on. Every time we've crossed this 250 threshold as of late, seems to be a line in the sand, market goes crazy. Right now we're just over 250. Um, and then we watch, we watch some miracle happen. The 10-year yield starts to come down. Relief from the market. <laughs> stocks, stocks start getting bid up again. It's such a game. It's a managed oh, market. Huge. It's And it's totally being run over by, uh, by the, in this case, the Federal Reserve. Well, let, let's go across the water a bit to the Bank of Japan because they've really been showing central banks with their experiments on QE, QT, uh, yep. you know, yield curve control, which they just, in my opinion, they had to expand that range because they were losing control. And that's the last thing. This is a Ponzi scheme. But mm -hmm. I mean, I personally think, so I want your feeling on this, that the Bank of Japan has been showing the rest of the global central banks how to do these experiments, but they're failing. They haven't been able to generate what they wanted since the early 90s, and they own most of the markets, whether it's the stock market or the bond market, they're buying into it. And yet, look at the purchasing power of the yen. It's the lowest that it's been in 50, 60 years, but they've been in deflation since the 90s. This is the model. <laughs> That's what they're doing here. And you're right. This is what's, what's going on here. Other central banks can see, are seeing what they're getting away with here. But, um, you know, this is all, it's, it's all going to change. We have right now, I think I looked it up two, two, day, two or three days ago, talked about it on my video blog. Global uh, debt to GDP is leveraged over about 350%. Right now. It's, uh, I mean, not just zooming in and it's crazy. You know, just looking at one particular economy and that number is going to, it must grow from here. It, I mean, people don't understand it. They, I don't know, you know, I guess it's the mainstream, you know, the propaganda, but that can only get worse. There's no alternative. This is again, why you got to look at holding physical assets here, gold, silver, commodity exposure here, because again, risk on eventually is going to turn to risk off in an extremely rapid way. Markets are supposed to run in cycles. We, I, most people understand that we don't get that anymore. No. We got mm -hmm. this constant since the last meltdown, you know, artificially suppressing of rates opens up a doorway for cash to make its way into, into equities, stocks, and you, it inflates a bubble. They've also been very successful in reinflating re a housing bubble like we've never seen. It's a nightmare. And then we're going to have to deal with a lot of other, this whole thing is just starting, just, just flickering. There's a spark right now with the banking sector. You know, it started a year ago. Um, and, and well, not even a year ago, the regional bank issue, like which is going to bring it off. Let's see where that goes. And then we have the whole com commercial real estate exposure situation that we're going to have to deal with too. So, but, but all this to me looks like a consolidation of the system, but going back to what you were talking about, yes, this, this is going to go on and on. It can't stop. So forget about looking for a saving grace. You got to look, look for alternatives here. And that is understanding that this whole thing is, in my opinion, is designed to fail. It's going to implode Absolutely. dead market meltdown yield spiking in an uncontrolled fashion. That's going to put massive pressure on global equity markets. Cash is just going to move. It's going to move from bleeding out of the debt market, putting pressure on the stock market, bleed off there and just, I mean, we're talking about a tsunami of cash that's gonna make its way into commodities. And to a certain degree, I do believe in crypt cryptos as well. Um, so I just look for the most likely places where cash will move. I think it's gonna go into other things too. It's gonna go into artwork, maybe classic cars. It's gonna, you know, you're gonna see all kinds of prices of, of real things that you can hold in your hand inflate. Tan well, tangibles, because it's going to try and find a home where it can hold its purchasing power. 
exactly. And that, that's I can't imagine it unfolding another way. I really can't. And I think about it constantly. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of hard not to, except yeah. a lot of people out there, you know, it's this normalcy bias. When they created the system to begin with, one of the things that they stated was that people marry the legal money of the state and they cannot but hope that it regains some of its purchasing power. Yeah. Good luck right? with that. Good luck. It's not going to, you know, I mean, you know, hope, people can hope all they want to. I mean, like central banks have been killing deliberately, in my opinion, and I've been saying this for 10 years, you know, sucking the purchasing power of their currency out, making it harder and harder for people to, to get by. But it's all temporary. You know, this, why, why do they not include things like food, inflation, and energy in the calculations? Because it's, it's transitory, you know, like we were told, you know, it's not. But that's the way it is. They try to they try to make people, you know, look, people, most people other than those that follow our work, I have no idea what's going on at all. Zero. They walk through time and space, not understanding right. a damn thing. And, uh, you know, they feel like it's above their pay grade or whatever, but it's not true. You know, it's not hard to understand this. And because uh, everything is mostly cause and effect. And we, if we understand the current situation and where we are now, and if people look at our older videos and say, hey, you know what, these people were talking about years ago, it's in our face. You can pretty much guarantee that what we're talking about is is where it's going to go in the future. I mean, you know, you, this, there's no doubt in my mind. Well, no, and it's really, frankly, not rocket scientists. It's simply know, a repetition it of thing. mystery, it right? It is exactly, and that's one of the things that I love about you is that you want people to do their own research, and so do I. You know, because I don't think you should take anybody's word for anything. Why would you take a central banker's word? They're human beings. And I don't know how much living in the real world that they've actually done. But well, I, with, with, with central bankers being human beings, uh, I, I, don't, I think they lack a human quality. So I don't even think, I tell people all the time, they're not even freaking human. You know, like people generally have, a, they care. You know, yeah. people are good at heart. Not these people. These organizations no, they're sociopaths. Have, they're, they're, they're essentially, yeah, yeah. They're essentially driven. Uh, they have one goal. And, uh, you know, what I t try to explain to people, and I think you would agree on this, is we're kind of living in a side effect of what central banks have planned decades ago. And they have yes. more in store for us. This yes. is on, on, a, on, a, on a predetermined pathway. And it's a slow burn, kind of like the boiling frog kind of syndrome exactly. here. Um, we are in the middle of Maybe it's not even the middle, maybe even the early stages. I have no idea of, of this neo-feudal system, extreme haves, extreme have-nots, unfortunately, and people getting crushed to death, a wipeout of the middle class, which I think both oh. of us have spoken about for a long time. And it's yep. in our face. It's getting worse. People can't make ends meet. They're struggling. Meanwhile, household debt, personal debt, consumer debt, credit card debt is ballooning and ballooning and ballooning. And talking about recession here, understanding that consumers pretty much maxed out here several months back very interesting phenomenon was occurring they were credit card or credit card issuers were, were just increasing people's credit lines just out mm -hmm. of the blue mm -hmm. um and they knew that people were going to act irresponsibly and they were going to swipe and swipe and swipe it, it yep. was a setup and that's exactly what yep. happened they knew what happened they're creating slaves to the system dependency on the current system uh and this is why again i tell people what do, what do we need we need a revolution we either we need people to revolt but they won't because there's too many people dependent on the system. Not the people that follow our work, I don't believe. We're in a different kind of a, a mindset. But for, for the most part, people want to be taken care of from cradle to grave, and they're willing to sacrifice anything to be taken care of from cradle to grave. Uh, and they want obviously, they want people ill, um, yeah. mentally ill, physically ill, uh, spiritually ill, yeah. you name it, so they can, again, be controlled. It's crazy. But that's really what I see moving forward. I would believe that you see the same thing. Oh, we always do. you uh, and me. Uh, Yeah, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. And you know, the statement that you made about this has been coming for a really long time. These kinds of changes have to take a really long time so that people don't notice it, the frog in the pot of water. And yep. so we started on the, you know, credit for the masses in the 20s. That was at the beginning of this experiment. That's right. That's and then exactly credit right. cards in the 50s. Mm -hmm. So 100% we have moved, been moving toward this 